I want to start with the Bucks because the Bucks played today, and that's the one game from today that I really focused in on. I wanted to also do Clippers Warriors, but I kind of ran out of time. I will probably do that tomorrow morning. Now, I want to talk about the Bucks because the Bucks just lost to the Brooklyn Nets, one fifteen to one hundred two. The Nets so far have been a little bit feistier on offense than what I think a lot of people expected. Cam Thomas can obviously go get buckets. They space the court around Thomas and Schroeder pretty well, even when Ben Simmons is on the court. Simmons plays 24 minutes, goes one of three from the field, but he can handle the ball. He's a good passer. He has six assists in this game, but Cam Johnson can really shoot. Dorian Finney-Smith can really shoot. They're, They're posing a bit more of a problem offensively than what I think people maybe expected, right? So I kind of want to talk a little bit about what Milwaukee is struggling with on defense right now, because they, they've been just been like undeniably catastrophic to this point. They gave up 130 plus to the Bulls in their previous game. And then they gave up 115 to a Brooklyn Nets team that frankly, while I did just say they have been feisty on offense, they are still one of the three or so worst teams in the league. And this is a Milwaukee team that is expected to compete for a title. Their front office is going into the season hoping to compete. I obviously want to bring up with the Milwaukee Bucks. Chris Middleton is out. This is not a team that has a lot of depth. When you're losing a player like Chris Middleton, it is important to note that or when you don't have that player. So let's just kind of jump in and talk through the tape here before we do that shout out to shabugan you're in australia didn't expect an nba show to share my time zone hell yeah here in australia we love melbourne australia okay this is from the game earlier today against brooklyn we're going to talk through both chicago and the brooklyn game from the bucks perspective and what i think my first overarching complaint with Milwaukee is, is just picking up guys in transition. It's a relatively simple thing that they just are not doing right now. You can see it all the time. It happens way too often. There are other guys on this team that I think are problematic in terms of the way that they are playing half court defense, but it all starts in transition. I think that they are generally just not picking up guys in transition first. So we'll start with this Nets game and then we'll go into the Bulls game. Let's go. So already they are in, let's call it a three on two, right? We've got three guys here for Brooklyn. We've got two in front, one of whom is Brooke Lopez. He's a little bit slow footed. You've got Giannis trailing here. You've got Prince trailing here. So if you can just stop this initial primary action here, in the two on three defensive set. You hopefully have enough help to get back. If I'm looking at this and I'm Milwaukee right now, I'm hoping Trent takes the ball. I'm hoping Lopez takes Cam Johnson. And I'm hoping that Prince can get back. Now, the way this works out, that doesn't become an option. Because Simmons is a good transition player. He obviously hits this quick pass immediately. That means Trent has to adjust. Trent does not adjust. He just stays there. That means Lopez is going to have to come over and help. That's going to lead Cam Johnson wide open in the corner. The problem with this is Gary Trent is now ball watching. Gary Trent needs to shoot out. If you're going to leave this guy for Lopez, you have to shoot out. You have to be aware that there's a corner three-point shooter coming. Cam Johnson is a 40% three-point shooter on open corner threes, at least, if not higher. There is no excuse for not having a guy end up on him. Trent just ends up kind of ball watching here. Leads to a wide open shot for Cam Johnson. They need to do a better job of picking up players in transition. This one, the second biggest problem I would say 
is their point of attack defense. This is not a roster that has a lot of great point of attack defenders, obviously, Chris, especially when Chris Middleton is out. Chris Middleton is okay at this point. I'd say he's probably about average as a point of attack defender. He is not great anymore. Like he was a really good defender back when he was a little bit younger. But you have Damian Lillard. Lillard has not looked great defensively so far, as you will see. You have Gary Trent. I think Gary Trent's always had kind of an overrated defensive pedigree. He's tough and physical, and he's willing to at least throw his body around when he's one-on-one, -on -one, but I don't think he sees... I don't think he has great awareness defensively of what's going on around him, typically. And his feet aren't the fastest, necessarily. So... On top of that, you have Torian Prince. Torian Prince does an okay job on like threes and fours, not a guy that you want on perimeter players. And Brooke Lopez is also slow-footed. So in general here already, you can see that they just have a speed problem. Just by talking through that, right? Prince better on threes and fours. Trent, not a super fast guard. Lillard's not a particularly fast defender. And Lopez is slow-footed. So what are we going to get here? I don't even know what you want to call this necessarily. I think this is almost supposed to be like a pistol kind of deal that Dennis Schroeder decides to reject and just get into the lane. And he just blows by Damian Lillard. There is no resistance at the point of attack. If there's no resistance at the point of attack, that means Lopez can't get over in drop coverage and cut off the angle. I mean, Giannis doesn't even really rotate over. I think Giannis hasn't been very good defensively in these first couple of games either which is not normal for him. I don't know what that's about necessarily. Hopefully this will improve. Okay. In transition, they actually do a decent job of picking guys up here. This time, now we get this screen. I do want to shout out Cam Thomas. This is a good screen that he sets here. He keeps himself attached to Brooke Lopez and forces that switch. But now we've just got a slow-footed player and Brooke Lopez says, come over, Trent, come over, help. That's what that little like move was there from Lopez with his hand. I need help. Come over. It's, Trent just kind of doesn't do anything. <laughs> just kind of, just kind of stands around. He kind of comes over. I would like to see Lopez be a little bit more aggressive. If he's going to have Trent come over, I would like to see Lopez be a little bit more aggressive, stopping him from getting baseline, but he's a slow footed guy, right? So you already see, we have not great perimeter defenders. We have problems in transition and we have relatively slow footed defenders as well. So this one, essentially just a little zoom action here. And again, just absolutely no resistance in terms of paint touches. So for people who don't regularly watch the channel, zooms are this player comes and sets a kind of down screen here for the man in the corner. Ball handler is going to dribble his way. Man in the corner is going to come around, take the dribble handoff and try and get into the lane. So takes the dribble handoff there and just look at this. Look at this shit show. It's just not another thing to call it here. Uh, Dennis Schroeder is six foot one or so. so. Something in that ballpark. He screens off both Damian Lillard and Torian Prince here. And that's a good screen. Don't get me wrong. But I just don't know what Damian Lillard is really doing here. So there are a couple of ways you can defend this with a center in this like Brooke Lopez is. You can have Damian Lillard switch. You can have Torian Prince switch here. And you can have Brooke Lopez kind of sit in drop. No, really switch. You wouldn't have Torian Prince switch this necessarily. You'd have Torian kind of fight over the top eventually. And then you'd end up with Lopez kind of getting onto the guard eventually to recover. But I'm actually not even sure what they're trying to do here with what Lillard does. Lillard is the one that confuses me. I'm pretty sure that they are just trying to stay at home and treat this 
where they're going to have Lopez and drop. At least this is the way that Lillard is defending this. Lillard is going to stay home with Schroeder. Lopez is going to go and drop and Torian Prince has to fight around. That's the way it looks like they're defending this. But I don't totally know why Lopez isn't there in drop if that's the case. If they're defending it this if they're defending it the way that it looks like with Lillard where Lillard is just staying attached to Schroeder and they're Tor- they're having Torian fight all the way over. Lopez needs to at least be here to stop the ball. If nobody's there to stop the ball, they're fucked. And at the end of the day, how you defend that if, you know, again, this is Cam Thomas, not the world's best passer. So if Cam Thomas does see this pass here, once Lopez shoots over, the way that you defend that then is that you have Lillard go to Dorian Finney-Smith. And if Dennis just stays out here, You have Lopez stay here on Brook, and you have Prince stay. You have Prince uh, recover out to Schroeder, or you can do it where Prince shoots down to Finney Smith, and Lillard stays attached to Schroeder. There are a few different ways that you can X out on shooters here. I would envision it the way that they would do it is with Lillard there shooting out, but it doesn't matter. The pass is never made because Lopez is never there and drop. And Lopez is a smart defender, which makes me wonder what exactly their plan is here, right? I'm just not totally sure if they know what their structures are, what they're running, what they're trying to run here. So again, you can see Lopez is like calling out actions early. Lopez calls out a down screen here. from I think that's Noah Clowney for Cam Johnson to come up. They end up faking the zoom action, rejecting the zoom initially with Cam Johnson, and then getting it to the second man here, who is Noah Clowney. And it looks like they've never seen that before. It looks like they didn't know that you could do that. This one in my opinion, is just a communication breakdown between Lopez and Giannis. I would like to know kind of, again, what is your plan on these things? I can't sit here and tell you for sure if they want to switch this or if they don't want to switch this based off of these last two possessions. Because again, the communication is just very clearly not here. And that's a problem with these two particularly. Giannis and Brooke Lopez have played together for six years now something like that, five or six years, probably for them to be in a spot where they're not totally sure who's going out. Like Giannis stays home. Brooks stays home. That's a real communication breakdown. And that's a significant problem. This one. I mean, again, just Brooke is not super fast here. Obviously I don't want to sit here and blame Brooke Lopez for a whole lot just because of his physical limitations. Right. But he's telling here with his point, He's telling Gary Trent to stay high. So he thinks that he can deal with Cam Johnson baseline. That's what that point looks like to me. And Johnson just beats him. But again, he's sitting here unsure of what are we doing? Like what's going on? So with that being said, it's possible he's pointing and telling Trent, like I need help here. It's possible that he's expecting like a Torian Prince or a Bobby Portis to be down here and help, but there's just like no effort here. There's no effort in transition. There's no willingness to give an extra effort and help here. Right. And when you have Brooke Lopez dealing with picking up the ball in transition, You need somebody to be available and help. There's no other answer. 
So this one, again, Simmons and Portis, uh, Trent and Portis, sorry, Simmons and Thomas dealing with this offensively. So rejected screen at the top. Portis stays home. They kind of peel switch it. Trent goes to Simmons. And I mean, Portis just gets put through the blender. We're about to go through a bit of a stretch of Bobby Portis clips here. I mean, that's just not good enough at staying contained. I get it that Cam Thomas's footwork is very good, but you really have to stay contained on these things. Let's get to a quick little note from Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the best place to get real money sports action with over 10 million members and billions of dollars in awarded winnings. Prize Picks has made daily fantasy sports accessible to all. You just pick more or less on at least two players for a shot to win up to 100 times your cash. Run your game all season long on Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the best place to get real money action. There are over 10 million members. Like I said a second ago, they invented the flex play, which means you can still cash out if your lineup isn't perfect. You can double your money, even if one of your picks doesn't hit. Prize picks always puts its members first. So all withdrawals are fast, safe, and secure. When my picks hit, I can get my money in as quick as 15 minutes. We are big fans of prize picks here. We absolutely love the app and what they're doing for the daily fantasy sports scene. Download the app today and use code Game Theory to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. Download the app today and use that code Game Theory to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. Prize picks, run your game. This one, is, this is just like so unforgivable that it's hard for me to fathom on some level so how does noah Clowney end up wide fucking open let's go back So just looking at the way this play is setting up, we've got Torian Prince has picked up his man. We've got Lopez having picked up uh, Nick Claxton. Pat Connaughton is here. Bobby Portis is here. And then you've got Dame Weekside. This is pretty easy pickup in transition to me. Connaughton is in early because they're playing so heavy in drop because Claxton is not a shooter and he wants to give some time for Prince to be able to get back. So what, what happens? Bobby Portis is supposed to be on Noah Clowney. Keep an eye on Bobby Portis here. Still looking at the ball. 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 Still looking at the ball while his man goes behind him. His man has somehow crossed his peripheral vision in a way that did not allow him to see it. He looks back finally. He comes back this way. Dame points, hey, this way. Bobby, your guy's over here. Lopez is trying to play drop and deal with the big here and the guard who is driving. They're trying to keep the guard to this side of the court because that's where the help is with Lopez. People, I think, might look at this and be like, why doesn't Brooke go over and help? It's because he's in drop coverage. And Torian Prince does his job. They're essentially icing this on a side ball screen. He keeps his body positioned this way, forcing Schroeder, is that, to go that way. Schroeder. If Lopez isn't here, 
theoretically, if Portis is in the right spot, there's no help at the rim. So Schroeder would just be getting to the rim here. So Lopez is in the right spot. Prince is in the right spot. It's just that Bobby Portis is totally asleep. And you can see, like, again, Brooke Lopez's reaction is just like, well, what? Like, that's like the arm raised, like, I don't know what to do with my hands motion, right? So a lot of confusion. This one. Again, it just feels like Portis is like behind the play. So Portis, again, very clearly guarding Noah Clowney here. And he's looking at the ball. He's still looking at the ball. He at least recognizes a little bit late that his man has gone behind. I mean, he's, he's just got to be a little, he's got to be more locked in. There's just not another way to put it. Bobby Portis needs to be more locked in defensively than what we've seen here. This one. This is off of an offensive rebound. It's the same play. These are hard, right? These scramble situations are difficult. But these scramble situations happen in part because of that initial mo moment where Portis loses his man. They at least get back, but it's what ends up happening is that kind of semi-open three, and that's hard. It's hard to manage. It's hard to deal with. This one, just like an empty ball screen. Giannis forces baseline. I mean, this is just lack of speed, lack of strength on the court, right? So everyone's in good position here. Giannis does a good job forcing the man baseline. Connaughton's going to close out and his feet are just a little too slow. He gets stuck in the mud. Noah Clowney then just goes through AJ Green. There's not an immense amount of defensive talent on this team either. This one, just an absolute blow by leads to a foul. And now we'll get into Chicago. I mean, honestly, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I think the Chicago tape is worse. on some level. So Josh Giddy just absolutely blows by Torian Prince and makes like an easy left-handed layup. This, the fact that Brooke Lopez is like going up onto the ball here. I'm not totally sure what that's about. Uh, they never really do that. Like they never put two on the ball there. Either one of two things could be happening there. Either that's just a mistake from Brooke Lopez, which I, I tend to think doesn't really happen all that often. I think Brooke is a very sound defender in terms of what he's being asked to do. That says to me, he's probably being asked by Doc, like, okay, if that's a pull-up shooter, you need to be up at the ball and like make sure he doesn't get a pull-up shot if your man gets screened. And like, I don't know, that just feels like kind of a poor choice to me. And this one just ends up with uh, Jalen Smith here. He has a one on two where Trent has to be responsible for both of these guys. This is one where Portis is in the right here. He has tagged into the lane on this short roll. He needs to be here. Smith does an awesome job pass faking, getting it to Desumu. He drills the three or no, he misses the three. So that one doesn't even get, doesn't even hurt them that much. This is where we're going to get into some more transition stuff. I mean, Kobe White just absolutely goes through the teeth of their defense. Nobody picks up the ball. Again, transition. I mean, Connaughton at least picks up the ball there, but it's just Pat's it's, it's a tough guard for Pat, right? Picking up Kobe White in semi-transition. This one, I mean, again, you can just see not a lot of foot speed, guys. Like, everyone's chasing. Everyone's trying to cover ground here. So, 
AJ Green does a good job of picking up the ball to help out DeLon here and then gets back out to Desumu. But I mean, this is an open driving lane for Io Desumu, who's a really good basketball player. Open lane. Portis has to help. Kick out. DeLon Wright makes the right move. Connaughton gets out there. But it's again another drive leading to more help. That leads to a kick. It's hard. It's just really hard when you don't have the foot speed and you don't have the ability to cover a lot of ground in the NBA like the Bucks are having right now. This one just, I mean, for nobody to step up on Jalen Smith here is, I mean, this has to be Portis to me. He's got to be there. Jalen Smith can shoot that shot. He's a real shooter. This one, again, in transition. Giannis is not picking up guys in transition, and Giannis is typically good at it, right? I mean, you can see Brooke Lopez is, like, literally calling out to Giannis. You got to take him. He can shoot. Brooke is dealing with the corner guy. Too late. Too easy. Just, just too easy. There's not another way to put it, right? Giddy just rejects a ball screen. Nobody there to help. It's too easy. This one, like, just to go back here, right? Gary Trent, they fake the DHO. He stays with his man. Prince ends up kind of just trying to chase, and he forces the pass. He does a pretty good job to get the ball out, but this ball just gets reversed. And I mean, I, I get why we're in this spot because, look, as soon as Giddy gets – the corner here on Prince, Giannis comes, right? And Giddy sees Giannis coming, which is why he hits that pass to the corner. And then it's just a reversal show. One, Lopez does a good job. Two, Savuch. I don't know why Gary Trent doesn't make that full scramble help. To me, like, I get that it's Levine versus Trent versus Vooch, but like, Give your defense more time. I think Trent's got to be there. I think Trent's got to be able to hit that scramble rotation across the perimeter. Doesn't end up hurting them, but to me, like it's the process is all wrong here. Giddy just blows by Torian Prince off of a hesitation, forces the foul. Ball screen flip. Sumu just gets by Damian Lillard, forces the help from Lopez. Lopez kind of has to be there, I think. But that leads to an open three and then like a kind of not great closeout. This one, Lillard just gets drilled back door. That was bad. Lillard just gets beaten here with this backdoor cut by Io Desumu. Too easy. No communication between Prince and Lillard here on what's going to happen. The way they defend it, it looks like Lillard's going to be responsible. He's not. Nothing. This is at least like a little fun mini action in terms of how they get Vooch wide open here, right? So Levine goes and sets a screen on Brooke Lopez. But it, it, it just all looks too easy. It all looks so easy to score on them right now. Again, giddy in transition. Nobody stops the ball. 
Now we've got a mismatch. Connaughton on Giddy, who's been getting paint penetration all day. Oh, wait, no, now we can just hit another backdoor cut. So this is an exchange. Vooch acts like he's going to set a screen for Levine to go around the screen. And instead, he sets it up beautifully and just absolutely nails Trent on the backdoor cut. Lopez is trying to pay attention to where Vooch is and trying to stay in the gap. It, it, there's just so many of these moments where it, it just all looks so easy. I mean, again, just beaten on another backdoor cut. This one, they at least even defend reasonably well, but I mean, just run through it. This is just a quick little exchange. Lillard calls out the switch to Portis. I think Portis is communicating here that he's got it, that he's going to have the sumu. Is they exchange? But Tsumu just face cuts Portis there, and it leads to all these crazy rotations. And now Giannis has to close out. They just look slow. There's not another way to put it, guys. They just look really slow right now. They look slow in terms of their decision making. They look slow in terms of their feet. This is like a real worry to me. Like we're going to go through Nuggets tape here probably in like 15 minutes. And we're going to see that, okay, there are some things that will get fixed. Michael Porter is not going to like play this poorly for a minute. Jamal Murray shot it well in the second game. The bench is a real concern, but like it's easier to fix bench stuff than it is to fix some of the other stuff. And Milwaukee will be okay. Like Milwaukee, I'm, okay, let me rephrase. Milwaukee will get Chris Middleton back and that will help them. That will help them immensely in terms of figuring out what exactly it is. But the other thing with Denver versus Milwaukee is that Denver has an awesome coach in Michael Malone. I have like full faith in Malone to be able to figure out okay, we have to figure out what we're going to do with our bench unit defensively. We have to figure out how to adjust our bench unit. Do we have options there? Okay, great. I don't think I trust Doc Rivers to be able to figure out any of this because Doc didn't figure it out last year. They were quite bad after Doc got there. They, they were a team with Giannis, Damian Lillard, and Chris Middleton, and Brooke Lopez that I think lost more games than they won when Doc Rivers got there. Doc Rivers was 17 and 19 last year with the Milwaukee Bucks. Milwaukee Bucks are now one and two. So Doc is 18 and 21, I believe, since he's been there. Maybe he doesn't have a great feel for the roster. Maybe, you know, they are getting older, right? I don't know. I will say I thought that Giannis played exceedingly well on offense in the game against Chicago. Uh, he had 38 points, five assists. I mean, he was every bit the dominant player they need Giannis to be in order to be successful. But yeah, it was it was a tough one. That These two games here for Milwaukee, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I am more worried about Milwaukee than I am Denver right now. Based off of what I've seen in their two games, I am more worried about them. They look they look really slow. They just look really, really slow to me right now. And Denver, like we're going to look up in a week and their schedule eases up in a big way. They have like two Raptors games. They have a Nets game. They have, I think they have one other game that's like a little bit easier. They're probably going to be like four and three and it's going to be like, okay, whatever. This is fine. But I don't know. Like, I think for this team, this particular Milwaukee team, I kind of wonder if Drew Holiday would be more valuable for them than Dame. Dame in a vacuum is probably a better player. You know, certainly offensively is a better player. But I think that on this particular group where they have struggled to bring in high level defenders, I think I would rather have Drew on this Milwaukee team.